Welcome back to In a Matter of Minutes, part two of our two-part series on barriers to entry. And in part one, we talked about barrier to entry, what's expected of me, professional arrogance, and the brain box. Two additional ones that we know are very important. And remember that we came across these barriers to entry organically by interacting with clients at events or after appointments and asking questions. And being that we were consulting and coaching, uh, with no dog in the hunt, it was easy to sort of take a different track with clients and some things were revealed. Oftentimes they were subconscious or subliminal and as the conversation came along, we found out that there were barriers to entry. So our goal at USA and the protocol division is to help our advisors come up with solutions as to how to overcome those barriers to entry. So the, the two that I want to leave you with here, a significant one, store blind. And this came from a very personal experience that I had many, many, many years ago when I was in the retail pet business of all things, way back. There were no pet codes, there were no pet smarts. Uh, I had moved to Florida from Kansas City and I was manager of what was then the largest pet store in the nation. It was nearly 15,000 square feet. And we had the whole deal. It's all the regular pets you'd expect, but we had the exotic cats in there. We had breeding birds, rare birds. It was crazy. It was a circus. And we, I was the manager of four stores in the Fort Lauderdale area. And my mentor was a really special guy from Barbados. He's a big guy with a, uh, the Barbados accent. It was phenomenal. He's, to this day, there are so many, so many lessons that he's taught me. Uh, he taught me that have stuck with me. But this was a big one. He came in one day through the front of the store uh, before we had opened, and he came back to me and said, "Hey, how you doing? What's going on? Um, tell me how your day is going." And I started, you know, and he said, "Well, let, let me back up. Tell me what every day looks like for you." And I said, "Well, I don't, you know." I don't know. He goes, what do you do here? And I said, well, I'm the manager. You hired me. He goes, well, okay, all right. And I was sort of being a smart aleck, and he was like, okay. He was very serious. He said, well, tell me how your day unfolds. And I said, well, I park out in the back, and I come in, and I turn off the alarm. He's like, okay. And I said, well, I come in through the, you know, through the doors, and I come out into the store. And I uh, start to check the displays and, you know, all the animals and the whole thing and wait for the team to get in. And I no sooner had had that out of my mouth than I knew exactly where he was going. And he stopped me and he said, so you never do come through the front door, do you? You don't really know what our customer experience is, do you? He said, here's what I want you to do once a week. I want you to park in front of the store, in the parking lot where our customers park. Is it, uh, see if the weeds are overgrown out there and see if the trash, and see if things need to be cleaned up. And uh, how does that feel? And then as you're walking toward the store from the parking lot, take a look at the, our big giant front windows. Are they all covered up with banners and things so you can't see in the store? It's an amazing sight here. Is it all blocked up? And, and when you come in the store, we're in Fort Lauderdale, of course, he says, for gosh sakes, when you open the front door, how does it smell? What's the temperature? And when you come into the store, are you able to see? It's 15,000 square feet. It's amazing. Can you see from the front to the back? Or is it all cluttered and crowded and displays all built up? And he said, what is the client experience you don't know? You're store blind. And I never forgot it. And as we went around with clients, and indeed with some of our best advisors, we found that that very thing can happen to you. Listen, you're very successful as an advisor. You run a successful practice. Your closing ratios are very high. Inertia confidence, we call that. Nothing's broken. But there's no improvements. And why is that? There's a little bit of store blindness going on there, isn't there? Have you ever taken the time to ask a family member? Your family knows what you do, but not really in detail. What about your best friends? If you had somebody call into the office, how is the phone answered? Set an appointment, how does that process go? Come in and actually sit down in the waiting area, and in the reception area, and then come and sit and have the appointment and let me go through my process. And what's the, what does the office look like? What does it feel like? What's the process? And it helps you overcome that store blindness. And periodically, we know that it's amazingly valuable to our advisors and to your clients, okay? So store blind, overcome that. And the last one is, I won't talk about money when it comes to introducing you or referring you. This also was an amazing personal story that I had. I have been privileged to spend a lot of time out on the road, coaching and consulting. And I was uh, back in South Florida again doing a presentation. 150 or so advisors in the room, and it was a great audience, a great, uh, a great time. And at the end, as I was leaving, there was an advisor that came running up to me out in the foyer and uh, said, oh, Steve, Steve, Steve. And I looked at her, I had no idea who she was. Turns out that she was a coaching 
uh, client of mine, and obviously over the phone, before we were using Zoom and so forth a lot, I didn't, I didn't know what she looked like. She came up to me and said, it's been great, thank you so much, I just love what we're doing, but I have a problem. And out of the crowd popped this other woman, it was her best friend, and who she had brought along to, wow, we're going to Fort Lauderdale, let's come on along, we're gonna we'll have a party, and I've gotta sit in a meeting, and it was, it, was, it was actually pretty neat. So her best friend is sitting in the meeting, comes up, and she said, tell him the story. And the best friend leaned over and said, I've been with Gwen, that was her name, for about eight years. And she's my best friend and she's my advisor, but I don't talk about her. And Gwen was in the background going, see? And, and so we started to ask questions. And, and I asked, what is it, you know, what do you know about Gwen? I know she's a great advisor and I really like her and all of this, but I won't talk about money. And when I started, I had some money and now I have more and she's done really well for me and all of this. She said, but I just can't go to my friends and ask them about their 401ks or whatever it is they have. And she was very adamant about that. And I ask advisors, in your own profession, with your own best friends that aren't part of your practice, do you really know the details around their money? You might see some of the signs and some of the lifestyle markers and those types of things, but do you really know where they're invested or what their foreign Ks are, how much money they have? And what we're doing now is leaving our clients to talk about us around money, and they simply won't do it. The only thing more uncomfortable than me talking to, saying, sharing my money situation with my best friend is to ask him about his money situation. So it was funny because I asked his friend, and I don't remember her name, I said, do you have any other things in common with Gwen? She said, oh yeah, we, we met through a pottery class of all things. And she went on to talk about how she felt about Gwen and she's so involved in the community and all of these types of things. And Gwen hadn't gotten to the point yet where she had developed her process with us. And that was the next step. And as we, the three of us, started talking about that, it became clear to the friend, I can't wait till I can describe my advisor around her process and the experience and introduce her like a good bottle of wine. And I'm gonna get validated for that. And so again, and this we cover deeply in the sounding board, the sounding board course on the Advisor Advancement Academy. How to become a sounding board, the difference between referrals and introductions. Don't leave your clients to talk, talk about you only in terms of money, okay? So there are the last two barriers to entry. Hope you had a chance to catch uh, part one of barriers to entry. And until we do this again, make sure that you stay grateful and make the minutes matter.